Hi everyone, my name's Andrew Richards and welcome to the System Tunnels Proc Dump section of the System Tunnels 25th anniversary event. Uh, as I said, my name's Andrew Richards. I have been the co-author of Proc Dump with Mark for about 10 years now, since about version two or three. Also happen to be the host of Channel 9 Defrag Tools, a, uh, what was a series of about 200 episodes that delves into troubleshooting, so something else for you to dive in after the event. And my day job is the a principal developer in Windows Reliability, making Windows more secure and reliable uh, as we go through the years. Uh, today we're going to be going over what ProcDump is from a basic level, not too deep a dive. It's got lots of features. Uh, we're just going to do the basics that will help you to become a better, a better user of ProcDump day to day, a better uh, debugger of dump files, and basically be able to root cause or at least identify where you are with your crashes and hangs in your applications. ProcDump is available at the System Tunnels website, systemtunnels.com, also aka ms slash ProcDump. The um, topics we're going to cover today particularly are what is the file that we make? Why is it called ProcDump? What is this process dump file? Uh, we're going to get a debugger so we can open those files. And then we're going to go through two main scenarios, crashes and hangs. Um, collecting some dump files and then digging into those. So first off, what is a process dump file? Well, this is a weird name. Um, a process dump is a way of taking a file version of an application. Think of it as a snapshot. The, file, the process is paused, so it's kind of like not moving forward. And then all the memory associated with the process, so things like variables and globals, and also memory to do with maybe threads and stacks, um, plus metadata, things like kind of like performance counters and its memory usage and CPU usage. Uh, all that is captured and put into a file. The file is called a dump file. And over the years, there's been a couple of file formats used for dump files on Windows and also on other platforms. Uh, ProcDump uses the mini dump file format, which is not to be confused with the mini dump mini sized file. Uh, the mini dump file format um, allows you to specify a range of sizes. So you can have a mini dump, a mini mini dump, all the way up to what we call a full mini dump, which is all the memory that is possible. Uh, ProcDump always writes its files using a .dmp extension. Uh, Windows error reporting uh, sometimes uses, in certain scenarios, HDMP and MDMP. Um, they are still the same file format. It's just an indicator that this file has heap memory into it, in it versus mdump, which would be mini size only. All the same file format. Uh, it's just, as I said, a hint as to what the file can do. The capture of a dump file can be done in various sizes. And the main three are mini, all, and mini plus, which is kind of the middle. Mini is what Windows Air Reporting uses. It's the simple, just what's required to understand the situation, but you won't be able to do that deep dive um, analysis. Mini all, complete end of the spectrum, it's everything. It's all the memory. And then in the middle, there's a, a one called Mini Plus, which is a proc dump uh, concept where we try to um, just get what's required, but kind of be sure, or try to be sure about, um, we do have enough memory to investigate a situation. If you have a really big server, um, where say like maybe a hundred gigabytes, it's a way of bringing that down to a more reasonable size in size in the ten to twenty gig range, for example. There's a couple of really used things. Uh, triage dump files, the same as Mini. Uh, Windows has a heuristic that ProcDump uses to try to identify PII and change that to uh, AAA in hex. The idea being we're trying to remove strings and personal information. It's not guaranteed. It's heuristic, but um, that, that's there. Mini custom, in the bottom of how this works, it all comes down to a hex bit mask. And so you can just type in that hex bit mask directly rather than relying on one of the pre-baked numbers. Uh, minus uh, MD uh, is for a DLL callback. So if someone wants to be a mini dump, write dump callback, which is this thing you can look on MSDN, you can provide the DLL. And then there's kernel, which is slightly different. So all of those so far define how big the file is going to be for the user mode dump file. You can also attempt to take a kernel dump file as well at the same time. So you'll end up with two files for the capture and it takes the kernel side of the process and 
You use that particularly when you're doing hang analysis where you want to, the user mode code is waiting on something and you want to see why it's waiting in the kernel. You can use VM map to get an idea of uh, all the different segments of the, of the process and what may or may not be brought in. Things like image, map files, and heap, the various types of pre uh, private memory heaps and stacks and private memory itself are the main things that we're playing with here. Procdump defaults to a year, month, day, hour, minute, second uh, file name format if you don't override it. Um, if you happen to take multiple sizes at the same time, and whether this be I want a mini and a full at the same time, for example, or a mini plus a kernel, you'll get a suffix of that size. Pretty rare that you need to override it as, uh, as a different file name, but the option is there. So let's uh, jump into a debugger session and um, just collect some dump files. So I've copied uh, proc dump into uh, a dumps folder. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run notepad and uh, take some dump files of it. So without any options, um, it's going to take a mini dump. And what it's going to do is match anything with the name that's unique enough. And if, as long as there's one, it will be happy. So for the case of notepad, there's only one. Uh, that was a mini. So I'm going to do a mini plus as well, uh, MP and mini all, or memory all, MA. And if we look at the folder now, we've generated three files. And you can see seconds went up as we ran each one. And this was the mini, 700K, mini plus 30 meg. The memory all, the full was 100 and something. So you can see that variety of sizes that you can get. And as I said, these two are roughly the same as from a debuggability point of view. If you um, are running, debugging or dumping like a really big process and um, it may not succeed because it's so long or so hard to dump, you actually can take multiple at the same time. So the idea is you get a smaller one guaranteed and then the big one may or may not succeed. So pushing this to the, exam, uh, to the extreme, I'm going to take three files at once. And you can see that all three were taking at the same time. And in this case, because they were like a set, uh, the size is put on, on the end. So let's jump back into what are you going to do with these files? Um, what, what's, what's the next step? So we need to get a debugger. Uh, Microsoft produces two main debuggers, uh, the Windows debugger, um, which is a very CLI command line approach to debugging, and Visual Studio through code and, and all the other variations of Visual Studio. That's more of a GUI-based approach. Um, the, today, we're going to be using the Windows debugger style of it, the CLI, because I want to show you the nitty-gritty details of what actually is in a dump file. Within that space, there is two options. Uh, for the last decade or so, uh, the debugging tools for Windows has shipped in the Windows SDK. Um, and recently, more recently, in the last couple of years, there's now a Windows Store application uh, called WinDVG Preview. And that's what we're going to be using today. The debugger is extensible. There is a plugin framework, and so you can add um, extensions of various types, uh, particularly two extensions that are worth adding to your tool set are PDE and MEX. PDE is very good at debugging UWP applications. Uh, it has a whole lot of tool, uh, commands to help in that space. And MEX is much more kernel focused. So this is more your kernel uh, blue screen dump file. Suggestion is pull them down. Uh, from their website and just put them in the same folder as your dump file folder. Um, I find I, if I put all the files together, I don't lose them. So let's have a quick uh, look at where those are on the internet. So WinDBG is in the store, you know, uh, get it, install it, pretty easy. Uh, Procdump is on systemternals.com, uh, www.systemternals.com or aka MS Procdump. Um, the Windows SDK um, it continually evolves as Windows evolves. Uh, you can download the ISO version of it or the installer. Um, you only need to choose the debugging tools out of the package. You don't need to choose everything, so it's only a couple of megabyte download. Uh, MEX is available on the download center. Um, it's an self, uh, a zip exe, so you just download it, extract the DLL, and then use the DLL. PDE is available on the Defrag Tools, uh, Channel on Defrag Tools um, homepage in this OneDrive link. Um, also, if you want to dig in deeper, and particularly for the MK option, the mini kernel option, a memory kernel option, uh, Defrag Tools episode 178 goes into deep, deep detail about what that looks like and how to use it and what scenarios. So 
let's uh, talk about what you're going to do with a dump file once you have it. If you don't know really anything about debugging, the easiest thing to do is open up the file in WinDBG, uh, either the old one or the new one, and just run bang analyze minus v or bang analyze pure. Uh, this is the same engine that Microsoft uses to back uh, Watson and you know, our telemetry, and this is how we map bugs against issues. And so with no debugging knowledge, you're really going to be driving, uh, getting the insights that Microsoft provides with the bang analyze tool. But let's uh, do it ourselves. Let's uh, dig into real world environments and um, you know, move from there. So the first step is to get some dump files. Uh, crashes are a good way to start and they're easy to find and semi-easy to do. Um, operating system has a thing called AE debug. Uh, it's part of Windows Error Reporting. And when a crash happens, it runs the AE debug handler. And so by installing Procton as the AE debug handler, you're going to get the um, uh, an opportunity to collect a dump file at a crash. To install it, it's from an elevated command prompt. Propped up minus I. The folder is optional. It uses the current folder by default. The size, if you don't specify it, will default to mini, which is a little bit small. Um, so you actually want to specify a size. If you have hard drive space, do memory all. That way you're guaranteed to have everything you need. If your hard drive is a little bit smaller, use mini plus um, and, and collect your files. And then the opposite, just use minus U to uninstall it. So once you've um, done that, and we can show that in action right now. Uh, I'm just going to install it, get full dumps, install, uninstall, oops, uninstall. You can see it deleting the registry keys and adding the registry keys. So in this case, we've got it installed. I'm just going to go in here and run a crash app. And it's going to run two of them, two different types of crashes. And you can see that it generated some files. And it's always going to be two per um, per system. The um, reason why you get two, sorry, I was uh, switching screens then. Uh, the reason why you get two is because the operating system tries two times to resolve the situation. The point of AE debug is to ask someone to fix the situation, not to collect a file. And so in that case, we don't fix it the first time. All we've done is dump the file. Windows Error Reporting calls you again, and then after the second time, it goes, okay, obviously this can't be fixed, and then continues on uh, to finish the application. Because of that, you can just delete the second file. Now, you notice that this one's got a dot one or a dash one. That's because that was the second dump file taken in that second, and in this case, it went over the second boundary, um, so the, the second moved up, so you can delete those. When it comes to the um, debugging of them, the main thing you want to do is follow these steps. This is the, the general steps to run when you have any generic dump file that's a crash. Last event is the first command you want to do. It tells you what, on what process and what thread issue happened and what exception it was. Uh, just gives you a general idea of well, what context this happened in. ECXR minus one, exception record. The minus one tells it to read the parameters, exception parameters, out of metadata, i.e. out of the dump, rather than out of memory. And what it's going to do is give you an extra level of detail about the um, parameters and the reason for the issue. ECXR, exception context record, uh, will change the default focus of the debugger to the throw. And what I mean by that is when the issue happens, it is thrown and then it is caught. So it's caught by Windows Error Reporting. What we want to do, and then, and then the state has changed because Windows Error Reporting is running, we want to wind back time the registers, the way that the system looks, uh, back to the throw and, uh, and look at in that context. Uh, the K command, which is stack, works at any time. If you follow this flow, uh, it will be uh, the call stack of the crash. There's a one specialization is, well, there's lots of specializations for exception code, particularly there's a specialization for CLR exceptions. If the code is CLR exception, and you'll see that in the last event output, then you want to run dot core DLL minus L for load, and that will load additional infrastructure in the debugger associated with CLR debugging. And particularly, it will make a command called bang PE, which is a uh, shorthand for bang print exception. And that will have a more rich um, way of printing out the exception. So it's kind of equivalent to exe XR minus one, but
but it's specific to CLR exceptions. So let's have a look at some of these dump files that we've been cre uh, creating and see what that looks like. Opening up proc dump, uh, uh, opening up the proc dump crash file in WinDBG. Right away, I'm just going to press K. You can see that we are in Windows error reporting. The crash has happened down here. It's gone through Windows. Windows error reporting has kicked in. And this wait for multiple objects is actually waiting for proc dump to take the dump file. Um, as I said, you can always run bang last minus v any time to get the answer. Um, but what we, we're going to go into the specific details. So dot last event just to show you what happened. So on process this number, thread this number, there was an access violation. The tilde dot command um, just happens to tell you where you, the, the debugger is currently right now. Same numbers. The de, because this is set, the debugger will, will default to the same thread. Uh, just, the fact that it's thread zero is by luck, not by design. Next command is exr minus one, show me the exception. In this case, it's an access violation. Um, the one means it's a write, so zero is read, one is write, eight is uh, execute. And then we have the address that tries to reference. If we do ecxr now and change our register context, you can see that the debugger has transitioned it from really the catch, which is what this is, to the throw. And here's, here's the aligner code uh, that crashed. So let's quickly do that for some other dump files that we have on this box. Dot last event, last event, uh, divide by zero. So we already kind of understand what we're doing here. Exception record, no additional parameters, change the context, and then you can see the line of code and the instruction that crashed. Um, more commonly is when you do this in real life. And so, uh, for the minus i example, uh, these, these have happened on my box, and all these ones I've kept uh, around in my box for examples. Last event, access violation, minus one, parameters. This time it's a read because it's a zero and a different address, ECXR, and then we can look at the code and we can see that there's a fault in the install service. Um, the, let's look at, um, actually I'm going to open both these up. I think next time, this one is uh, a security failure. Looking at the number, it is of sub subcode seven, which is a specific thing, which is app exit. It has this error code. So we can say, what does that mean? Class is configured to run a different as a security ID, blah, blah, blah. Change the context, look at the code, and then you can see the line of code is reporting the failure. So. It's somewhere around here that the fault is. This last example that we have from my hard drive, last event, CLR exception this time. Uh, you can see the uh, CLR exception code, five parameters. Um, there is an error number right there. Now the Fs are on top because it's sign extension. So because the last bit, the top bit of the eight is set, when you cast that 30 bit number up to 64, the one is repeated. That's how like minus one works. Um, negative numbers work. So here's our error. In this case, um, we can jump to the context um, and you can see CLR being busy, but what you really want to do is follow those steps call DLL minus L um, to load. You can now see it's loaded and we can do pre PE for print exception and we get a much better view of the world. And in this case, you can see there's some dictionary code going on, argument exception, an item with the same key has already been added. So the same key was added to the dictionary. You can see the call and code. If you had symbols, you could uh, dive into a bit more. And once again, the same error code as we saw above. All right, so very quick whirlwind way of looking at crashes. So let's uh, start looking at where the power of proc dump kicks in and start using some of its tooling. Uh, there is uh, four or five different ways of proc dump can do collection. Um, we can do it based on CPU going too high or too low. So if a, if a process runs away um, on compute or um, it under runs away, it goes under. Um, yeah, the pair to that is memory and, and performance counters. If the memory goes too high or too low or if a performance counter goes too, or too low. Um, and the other ones are more uh, kind of like state machine weights ones. You can do it based on an exception. So if you might have a throw that is caught but the throw represents a situation that causes maybe an application to become unstable. 
uh, rather than being critically killed. Uh, so that's what exceptions is for. Minus H is hung windows. That's when you want to diagnose into a gray screen where a, um, an application you know, freezes and ghosts. And then the other one that's not used very often is terminate. Uh, that's when you literally terminate yourself. You can call the API process terminate, self-killing. So you want to find out what code caused that. Um, and then how many seconds uh, applies to those things. So how many seconds in a row does it need to happen? So let's um, use PropNap again to trace Notepad again. This time we're just going to do CPU. Now I don't know how many how much CPU Notepad uses, so let's um, just start with 99%, uh, like nearly all the CPU of the box. And what I'm going to do is just type a lot of stuff and copy paste it. And then we're going to run Process Explorer at the same time. And we're going to find this process. And we have its performance graph. So here's its CPU usage. So what we what I want you to do is pay attention to here um, as I paste and also pay attention to uh, Presses Explorer's count. So as I'm doing this, the pasting, it's kind of expensive, 1%. I'm going to copy a bit more so there's a bit more involved in the paste, like the whole document. And it's hovering around 4 or 5%. Um, so This time, I'm going to re reduce the the um, the load to two percent, and keep on pasting. And now you can see, look, we've not noticed four percent, six percent, but I'm going to let go. And so, because we haven't got to the seconds, uh, the number of the seconds by default is ten. So we can cancel that and go. Look, I only need it if it lasts three seconds, for example. And I'm going to get a full dump, for example. Uh, continue my pasting, triggers firing, triggering, and then uh, we've made a dump file. Um, and then if you open up the dump file, the dump file will default to the um, the thread that had the most usage. And if you use the command bang comment, you can see uh, what proc dump observed and on what thread. So more um, uh, that's that's like kind of the performance kind of view of the world. So let's uh, do something uh, a little bit more uh, invasive, and let's look at proc dump. Oh, so let's look at this trace explorer. So I'm going to look at um, explorer, and I'm going to filter for nothing. So I could filter for something that doesn't match, or or a blank string. You can't match a blank with a non-blank, so that's also guaranteed. And we're just going to look at explorer. And so I'm going to use uh, Windows Pause to bring up the About screen, and then I'm going to close it. And you can see there's a slew of events on the screen. MSC, uh, in lowercase ASCII, is actually 6D7363. Uh, this is Microsoft C. So this is the C++, C++ C++ exception code. And you can see these are all C++. because they're, So they're kind of codey, kind of normal. But this one's kind of weird, the 4000 one. So let's, um, let's catch that guy. And I can choose to match anything. This any part of the string can be matched. So I could use this part, this part, anything that matches. And I'm going to say, you know, what? I want the first two of these, one, two, but I don't want the third, for example. So run up the demonstration again. You can see the first one capturing. It's going to skip over the the C ones, and then you can see the second one capturing, and then it ends because it's satisfied. We've satisfied the queries. Opening up one of those dump files. We can follow the same steps for crashes in this case because it is uh, a crash scenario. The slight difference is ProcDump has taken the dump file at the throw, not at the catch. So we don't need to change time at all. We can just do last event and see, yep, uh, a win times, there's the error code. Show me the exception information. Um, it has three parameters. Once again, it has a code. And we get an information about that. And as I said, because we're at the throw, not at the catch, we can just press K and see um, the code. And you can see some reporting code, reporting code, and this is the code around here somewhere that originated the issue. OK, so looking at that in a text form, um, we can um, take dumps at first chance and second chance, 
first chance, the minus E1, is when something is thrown. A second chance is when it didn't get caught and it crashed. It's exactly the same scenario as you can go minus E2 or minus E nothing. Same scenario as what would happen if we had the code written as an install handler minus I. So it doesn't tend to get used. Um, you can use more than one filter. You can use positive and negative filters, including and exclude filters. A uh, whole lot of examples. I uh, won't go through them right now. And then, as I said, we, this is the thing that we traced before. Some uh, really uh, esoteric options that we'll just quickly go through. Um, minus B treats breakpoints as exceptions by default. Our breakpoint is ignored and discontinued when we're doing exception monitoring. Uh, but if, if the breakpoint is needed to be caught, you can uh, add minus B. Uh, by default, because of limitations of CLR and OS, if the CLR is detected in a process, we only do CLR monitoring and we don't do native, like normal Windows monitoring anymore. If you are trying to catch the native exception, use minus G to ignore that interop across the CLR and stay in the native debugger. Minus L is a log output, um, so this is output debug string, so you can see that on the screen. And minus T we talked about quickly before. Uh, reflection and minus A avoid outage allows you to take the dump file on a clone, so on like a fork in Unix. And so if you have a, a process that needs to continue um, for maybe production reasons or say that it's maybe just producing video content or something, uh, you can make a clone, which is like a snapshot, and then it does it in the background. Uh, avoid outage um, if ProcNAP knows it's in a situation where it's having to uh, pause the application for too long. Uh, rather than taking a dump file, you can use avoid outage and it will miss taking the dump file rather than avoid an outage. Um, in some very rare situations, you want to kill the process after you've collected it, minus K. Um, when you're doing CPU tracing, um, the scale is between 0 and 100. Um, but if it's only one thread on, a, say, an 8-core box, it means its range is really only between 0 and 12. And so what you can do is by adding minus U, instead of that range being 0 to 100, it changes it, say, to 0 to 800 if it has 8 CPUs. And then you can use a number between 0 and 100 to represent that. It's a way of giving granularity. <clears throat> you don't have to have the process already running. You can use minus W for weight. It just uh, does a poll every 500 milliseconds to see if it can find the process. And basically, if you're a Windows on Windows 64 debugger within Microsoft a developer, then you need minus 64. Super, super rare. So hopefully that was a um, understandable and, and easy way to get into the basics of, of WinDBG. Uh, hopefully um, I've inspired you to practice your debugging. Uh, at least install the debugging tools, install Procdown minus I to get your local dump files collected, and open up a couple. Uh, you'll get you know, a couple of dump files every little while. Sometimes you'll go through, have stable periods, sometimes you won't. Um, it's really hard to tell when you're going to get dump files. But open them up. Last event, EC, uh, ECXR minus 1, uh, ECXR and K to get an idea of where you are. And it gives you an idea of what, what's the next steps are. If you want a, a much more deeper dive, uh, there's a whole slew of videos on the Defrag Tools series um, about system terms in general and there's a good 10 or 20 on debugging. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference today and thanks for listening. Bye.